is officially December-ish and there is snow on the ground. It is incredibly cold. And what if I told you there are seeds that you should be planting now? Yes, now, right now, in the snow, on top of the snow. No lies. It can make a huge difference in regards to germination rates and make your life easier in the spring because you have to start less out here in the cold. And let me tell you, it is cold. My fingers are frozen and the camera battery is just saying sayonara. Probably wants to go live in Mexico. So while everyone else is packing away all their stuff for next year, us geek crew folks are going to be outside gardening like crazy people because that's what this group of people is. So oddly enough, snow sowing mimics Mother Nature's natural process. What we're referencing is cold stratification, which is essentially a biological clock being turned on or a timer that's being turned on. Now, what essentially happens with any sort of plant that is in the cold is that it has two options. Option number one is that it's underneath the snow which is where it begins to mature. And if we sow them now here in December, we have four more months of snow that will accumulate on top of those seeds, which is exactly what we want. Option number two is that you have plants that are way above the soil level and they kind of slowly over time make their way into the snow and the soil via bird activity, wind movement, mechanical manipulation, that sort of thing. So in 2018, there wasn't a meta-analysis done. And if you don't know what meta-analysis is, it's basically looking at a bunch of different studies and amalgamating them into one little journal that is able to kind of justify the explanation for something. And in this case, it was looking at the stratification of perennial seeds in particular. And it showed that 60% of most perennials require some level of stratification, which is exactly what we can make happen here in December. The reason why snow over starting these seeds indoors is so valuable is because snow actually, shockingly enough, gives a very stable temperature that increases and decreases very evenly when compared to something that is indoors or inside of a greenhouse. So here are some examples of seeds you can actually sow directly in the soil by or snow just by broadcasting them over top. And if you ha don't have snow yet, but you know you're going to get snow, which is the important part here is that you get snow eventually, is that you can broadcast them on the soil surface and then the snow will eventually go over top. So I think the obvious one is native wildflowers. They're not limited to coneflower, black-eyed Susans, and milkweed. There's a ton of different colors and versions of all of those. And I have every single one in my garden. And every single one I actually did sow in a pile in snow several years ago, but nonetheless, they do very, very well. Next up is actually cold, hardy vegetables. So this one I enjoy doing because it's one of the first things you can get out of the garden in the spring. I personally like doing it with spinach, but you don't have to limit it to spinach. You can do spinach, kale, Swiss char, mustards, carrots, and even beets. These will germinate the moment the soil hits five degrees Celsius, and they will be completely insulated and supported by the snow up until then. And trust me, you will get a harvest way sooner if you do this method. Not to mention less pests or pest pressure on the seedlings themselves because they get a head start before the pests can really cause any issues. Perennial herbs can include things like chives, sage, or thyme. And then oddly enough, strawberries. In particular, alpine strawberries. So here's the timing that you want to look at if you're going to go and plant any of these seeds. Number one is you want your daytime temps to be consistently below zero. So it's actually going to be plus 10 here. I know we are up and down, up and down. It's wild, wild fall winter. Anyways, you want to wait till your daytime temps are on average below zero. So right now is not a good time for me to do this. I need to wait. The other key is we want to make sure that the soil is frozen two to five centimeters in depth. The lower levels are not going to be frozen, but we want to make sure those top layers are frozen because that's going to prevent water and ultimately germination long before we want it to happen. So you can get a soil temp thermometer to do this. Another way to look is actually just to kind of take a coat hanger and pop it in there. And if it seems like it's it's frozen, it probably is. That's a good indicator as well. So the next step is you're going to just broadcast the seeds onto the surface of the snow. If you want to, or you're worried about wind action and erosion or removal of the seeds via critters, you can just do little lanes or rows similar to what you would do on the soil, but in the snow, and then place the seeds in that space 
We do not want to pack any snow on top of it. We want everything to be light and fluffy. And if you do have a major critter issue, whether it's the form of birds or mice, you may want to consider putting a netting. So in the case of birds, just a, a mesh netting over top of the space that you have planted. In the case of critters, you may want to consider something like a chicken wire to help keep those guys out. Now, interestingly enough, while your seeds appear to be asleep, they're not. While your soil appears to be asleep, it's not. The University of Saskatchewan actually showed that microbial activity is still taking place in the soil. When it's minus two degrees Celsius, it's slower, obviously, but it's still there. So what this means is that when things do begin to melt, everything is going to have a massive jump start on anything that you would have started indoors and you're going to transplant outside because we're completely skipping the entire process of transplant shock. So if you're wondering if a seed can be done this way, um, some things to think about is tomatoes and peppers, no. Anything that says do not stratify, obviously you want to skip. Things like annuals don't have the dormancy gene in them. So if it says annual on it, generally speaking, probably not a great idea. What you want to focus on is cool, tolerant perennials and annuals. So if you're wondering whether or not your seeds actually would benefit from stratification, you can be your own garden scientist and do your own tests. What you would want to do is you would want to take half the seeds and put them in a damp paper towel inside of the fridge, inside of a Ziploc for somewhere around six weeks. After six weeks, you're going to pull that half out then you're going to plant the half that stayed in the cupboard the entire six weeks, just at room temperature. And you're going to plant the other half that was stratified. What we're looking for is either A, faster germination rates, so things popping up sooner, and B, actually higher germination rates. So more plants coming from the seeds that were put in either application. Obviously, if the ones in the cupboard do better, they don't like to be stratified. If the ones that were put in the fridge do better, that is the one, that is the method that you want to use going forward specifically for those seeds. So there you have it. I bet you never would have heard that you need to start some of your spring seeds here outdoors in November, December, January. You're welcome for always teaching you something new, I'm sure. Now keep in mind, this is not actually my seed starting video for December. No, that's right, folks. There are seeds you need to start indoors in December. I wish I was lying. I'm not. So Hang out for that video. I will do it a little bit later in December because I'm lazy. Okay. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.